Hi everyone and welcome to the ninth lesson in our Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde GCSE study guide series. If you haven't seen this channel before, what we're doing here is we're going through all of the characters, themes, key quotes, model answers, paragraphs, context, everything that you need to really do your best in the GCSE uh, literature exam when you're writing an essay on Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. If that sounds like something that would be useful to you, stick around. Um, over the last eight weeks, we've gone through uh, character studies of Mr. Utterson, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Dr. Lanyon, good versus evil, violence, duality of nature and repression. Um, we are going to go through corruption. We're going to do that next week, I believe. But for this week, I wanted to dive in and do a model answer, a full essay, because I've had a few people requesting that. Um, so I thought I would just dive straight in and go through a, a full answer, especially because we're only a couple of weeks from the exams right now, if at time of recording you're in year 11. So, you know, you've got about two weeks now until you're actually sitting and doing this, if you're doing this. So we're going to do a model answer and uh, then we will still go through corruption. So there will be a video on every major character and every major theme that I really recommend that whether you watch my videos or something else, I recommend you look at every single part of this, get lots of key quotes, really understand these characters and these themes. And uh, for most of you also, the, the, the context, we've been talking about context the whole way through together as well. So we have duality here. Um, and this essay, just a shout out to yorknotes.com. Uh, it's actually a, a student that wrote it on that. I realized it wasn't really fair for me to use my own students work every time because some of my students are still watching these videos so it's not really fair i've got several great model answers from students but i feel bad if they've already written it they know it's good and then they're just sat watching themselves although one of them actually watched back a video that i did on a model of his, his work and he messaged me after and was like it was just great to have 20 minutes of you basically complimenting my work so you know not the worst thing i guess um, but yeah, so the question is about uh, the double, also a okay, duality of nature. So we've done this thing recently. Rather than just talking it through, I thought it'd be cool now that we've gone through it and talked about it to actually see what a full essay looks like fleshed out. So if it's not level nine, which I don't think it is fully level nine, the other thing I'm doing in my videos, which is a bit different, I think, to a lot of videos out there, is I'm showing you how we could get it to level nine. So instead of just being like, this is a model level nine, I'm going to be like, well, this is probably a seven-ish. Here's how we get it to an eight. Here's how we get it to a nine. All right, so follow along and let's see how we do. So the concept of the double is central to the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There are several types of duality. The most important is the mix of good and evil in human nature. Other types of duality include appearance versus reality, science and, and the supernatural. This passage focuses mostly on the duality of good and ill in Jekyll's personality. So we're not going to spend the time actually reading the extract, but there is an extract based question here, the same as you will have for almost any exam board that you are seeing. Um, but there are quotes from that extract, so it doesn't really matter that we haven't read it together. Uh, Jekyll's statement is an important part of the novella, as it is the first time we find out the whole story and see events from Jekyll's point of view. In this part, so that's the last chapter. In this passage, Jekyll states one of the major themes of the book, those provinces of good and ill which divide and compound man's dual nature. The second aspect of a person is sometimes called their alter ego, the aspect which Jekyll names Hyde. OK, so here's the first thing I would do to boost this essay up. I think that what he's talking about here or she, I'm not sure the gender of the student, but anyway, what they are talking about here is um, this is all introductory to me. Yeah, um, I think that the introduction is a little bit too long. I do think that this first bit was a good starting point as an introduction, because what they do is they say in this essay, I'm going to be looking at good versus evil as a duality, appearance and reality as a duality, science and the supernatural as a duality. So we've got three good dualities and then we could have three major paragraphs on those. What we're then going in about how Jekyll mentions it as one of the main themes in the book and stuff. I don't think that you need to have four and a half lines for that. I think you could do one line extra in the introduction if you want. And that also then introduces, because that's where the extract was from. But I don't think you need to have this four and a half lines. I don't think that this really adds too much, being totally honest. But having a little introduction, I don't massively recommend it, but 
you know, there's nothing in the mark scheme really for most of the exam boards that say you need it. But at the same time, it's not hurtful to do three or four lines and just tell the examiner what you're going to be looking at. Jekyll says he has been aware of two aspects to his character for a long time and felt he was living a double life. So as a point, that's not bad. I think that it would be great to have a little bit more um, clear of a point of, you know, uh, one duality is this, you know, at the moment, I'm thinking this is good and evil that it's going to be going into here based on that. But I'd rather the point was really specific and it was clearly, okay, this is, you know, that one of the major dualities is the good versus evil we see in Dr. Jekyll. So be really clear on your points. It's not a bad point, but I think it could be sharpened. He tried to live as if he had only one nature, hiding his faults because he was ashamed of them. But it was a strain. This introduces a different type of duality, that between appearance and versus reality. Right. So there you go. I thought it was going to be about good versus evil from that first line. And actually, it's about appearance versus reality. So that, again, just shows how important it is to have your point very clear. So Jekyll has been aware of two aspects of his character for a long time and felt he was living a double life, appearing one way, but in reality being another. That would be a much better point to start with. The appearance he presents to the outside world, a respectable doctor, is not the whole reality of who he is. Although he calls himself a double dealer, which is usually a term for a cheat or a criminal, Jekyll is honest in saying that both aspects, good and bad, were equally part of him. He now recognises that these, opposites ur that these opposite urges made me what I was, but it is too late to put himself back together into a single whole personality. He also sees that the division is present in everyone, though it is less obvious in most people. So this second half is really good because what it does is a lot of what's called AO1 for most of the exam boards. Um, even if it's not AO1 for your exam board, one of the things that you need to do in every exam board is show that you know the characters, you know how you know the themes, you understand the, the text really well. So by explaining that, you know, Jekyll is basically made by the fact that he's part of good and part of bad, and he recognises that is a huge sort of AO1 point, showing that, that this, this student really knows the character, how they fit in, how it links to the themes. It's really good. What we need to do to boost this up to level nine is we need to do a little bit more analysis, which is for most of you 802. So he calls himself a double dealer, which is usually a term for a cheat or a criminal. That's fine, but we should be adding techniques where we can. So he uses the metaphor of a double dealer, or he uses the imagery of a double dealer, or he uses the alliteration of a double dealer to emphasize that he sees himself as a cheat or a criminal and later on uh, made me what I was. Um, it's interesting that he speaks in the past tense, what I was. So that also, I think, is something that you could analyze more deeply. Because he's talking in the past tense, it suggests that he has transformed into something different now. So even now, his appearance and his reality might be quite different to what he's talking about. So I think you could go deeper into that. Final thing I need to see in the essay for almost every exam board is some context. But when I went back and looked, I think this was written for um, WJEC, Wojek. So they don't do context. So I will also add some context in as we go, just to help with that. So with this bit, what I would do, uh, talking about duality of nature, is I would talk about Freud, Sigmund Freud. And Sigmund Freud um, wrote about the id, the ego, and the superego. So I would talk about how uh, Jekyll recognises that he is the ego in terms of Freudian psychology. And so he's wrestling between the id. The id is like your deep, dark impulses. So that's Mr. Hyde. And the superego, and that's like your most moral good virtues, like the angel, so to speak. So the superego is like the angel and that it is like the devil almost, and you're sort of in the middle wrestling between them, yeah? So that's what I'd add as context here, the fact that Freud had discovered the idea of the id, the ego, and the superego at a very similar time when, when this was written. Jekyll's scientific work leads him to a solution to his own double dealing life. I love the fact that it's coming back to the double dealing, that's cool. He can make a potion which separates out the bad and gives it independent life, but all he is really doing is making an even deeper trench between the parts of his personality. 
I, again, I think it needs to be a much clearer point at the beginning. So we are talking in this paragraph about science and the supernatural being a duality. Um, so I, rather than him saying like it's the double dealing life and there's a potion that separates the bad and gives him independence, whatever, I would keep it simpler and I would just say Jekyll scientific work leads him to another type of double dealing, that of science versus the supernatural. So keep the point nice and clear in this paragraph, I'm going to be talking about the duality of science versus the supernatural. What he then says about build, build, what his, his work does builds or makes an even deeper trench. This is excellent. Great quote. I rarely see that as a quote in any essay. So it's always good to try and pick out like more unique, small quotes rather than, you know, the big ones, the big common ones like, you know, Mr. Hyde trampled calmly on the little girl or my devil had been long caged or whatever. There's nothing wrong with using those famous quotes. But if you can find little quotes that no one else is using, that's even better. So that's really good. But again, what we're struggling with here is we're not getting any AO2. So even deeper trench, it's a metaphor again, or it's a symbol, it's imagery. Um, I would talk about it as a metaphor personally. So we get this sense that he's digging himself deeper and deeper into his troubles, right? And we just need to analyze the quote. We need to analyze the quote. And it hasn't been analyzed here. He says that his scientific studies led wholly towards the mystic and the transcendental. This is the point over which he first falls out with Lanyon. The science and supernatural duality is presented through the contrasting characters, Jekyll and Lanyon. Lanyon sees science as being wholly rational, considering anything else to be balderdash, a word that dismisses Jekyll's view without giving it any dignity. So this is a little bit of analysis, which is good. The word balderdash, the insulting word, dismissing Jekyll's view without giving it any thought or dignity, good. Jekyll's choice of words, mystical and transcendental, make his interest sound elevated and superior. It's positive word choices, what we call positive lexis. So this student now has managed to analyze a bit more deeply into these other quotes, and that's really good. The two areas of knowledge, the scientific and the mystical or supernatural, are another aspect of the double in the novel. That line does nothing for the essay. You know, don't waffle, don't add extra bits that you don't need. For those students that need context, I would talk about scientific discovery in the age of um, in the age of the Industrial Revolution, at the late Industrial Revolution. So, you know, um, we were making so many scientific discoveries in the West in the 1800s, and so there was a real push between science and the spiritual, or science and the supernatural, of where is the edge of what mankind can do versus what God or like a higher power can do. And, you know, at this time in history, remember that most people in England would have been Christian. So there's this idea of what can we do and where does that line cross with, with our God? And, um, and so when we're talking about that, you could say Lanyon is more of the orthodox, like there's science and nothing else. But Jekyll is almost suggesting that there are, extra layers going into the realm of like um yeah well obviously the supernatural or the religious if we push science too far so i would talk about that in terms of 803 or some of the context basically jekyll approaches the mystical through science when jekyll and hyde was written people were starting to make an interest take an interest in psychology which also tries to investigate the mind or soul through scientific ways writing about this duality of science and mystery would make the novella seem topical to stevenson's audience the idea of a split between the good spirit and the bad body seeking physical pleasures is very old. Jekyll says that the awareness of good and ill part, parts of the human lies at the root of all religion. Stevenson himself rejected Christianity and became an atheist. There may be some criticism in Jekyll's statement. Religions exploit the natural duality of human nature, making people feel bad about themselves. OK, so what we have here, I must be wrong, so I apologize. I thought Woodjack did not need context, but clearly this is context, right? maybe i'm mixing up maybe this wasn't a woodjack um essay maybe it's the one i'm doing later on macbeth anyway so this is all great context now my recommendation would be to try and put a little bit of context that is very relevant to each paragraph if you can because as you know my if you've watched any of my videos before as you know i would recommend point evidence technique explain possibly another evidence technique explain then a little bit of reader response if you can 
and then some context in every paragraph. So P-E-T-E-R-C, point, evidence, technique, explain, reader response, context. But um, technically, you don't have to do that to get full marks by any means. You can do chunks in your essay of context. Um, so this is a very good chunk of context. Um, the last line suggests there might be more than two aspects to human nature, but Jekyll doesn't know because his explorations did not pass beyond that point. He only experimented with two. Um, this would mean a character could not could have sorry more than one alter ego. But Jekyll's conclusion, which comes too late to help him, is that it is na natural to be composed of conflicting parts. Man is not truly one, but truly two. Trying to drive out the evil to separate it in the personality of Hyde is his downfall. The separation is not sustainable. Although Jekyll decides to give up Hyde and stops taking the potion, he cannot. Hyde breaks through because he is truly part of Jekyll. Yeah, and that's the end of the essay. So the reason I had to check is because it wasn't a bad ending. You don't have to have like a huge conclusion at GCSE level, but it doesn't necessarily fully wrap it up in a way that I would personally have liked. Um, but we've got that same thing going on with this essay. Really good AO1, really good understanding of the text and the characters and the themes, really good. We've got a good chunk of context now, which is, is also very helpful. And we've got loads of good quotes, but, and some of the quotes are really small and niche, which is great. But the whole way through, the biggest issue we're having in this particular essay is that lack of analysis, yeah? So I implore you, if you wanna get a level nine, you have to analyze deeply into each quote that you put into your essay. So use as many quotes as this candidate has, but try your best to also add in analysis at every single point. So let's just take these two because we've analyzed through as we've gone. So not, the explorations did not pass beyond that point. For me, I would talk about the, the harsh P phonology. So it's an alliteration of P's, pass, point, and even the B pass beyond that point. These are known as plosive sounds. So it adds a bitter tone to Jekyll. Jekyll is kind of bitter that he hasn't been able to push beyond where he got to. And that really says a lot about his character. And it says a lot about duality of nature, because what he's basically saying is he found this split in nature and it wasn't enough. For him. he wanted to push for more. Right. And the plosive sounds help to show that. So, again, we're diving into the quote. Uh, later on, he talks about man is not truly one, but truly two. You could talk about the repetition of truly, truly. That's also technically what's called anaphora, A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. -A -A. So it's like emphasizing this duality which he has discovered. Um, and the fact that he uses the word truly, truly obviously links to connotations of the truth. And so as the reader, we then start to think like, what is the truth? And for this one, to add context, I would talk about um, Darwin. I'm sorry, I forgot. You know, Darwin. Charles Darwin, that, that strange dude. Uh, no, that very famous scientist. So he, he came up with uh, obviously the theory of evolution. Uh, this is this idea that the human beings origin of the species is, is through millions of years and ultimately through primates to us, right? So um, if the theory is correct, then what it is saying here at this early point of, um, of understanding is, uh, understanding that could be the origin of our species is that we are more than one part because we've evolved up from other parts so primate primates different apes mate monkeys etc they they obviously have got quite a lot of differences with us in terms of their personalities in terms of their nature right so this duality of nature in humans could be explained by this idea that that uh, we get some of our parts some of our nature from our earlier ancestors. So I would talk about that in terms of context here. If you did all those things that I said, so in a nutshell, if you strengthen the points, if you analyze a bit more deeply than this candidate has, if you add relevant context in each paragraph or have a good chunk like this, that's how you get to level nine with Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I think that's everything I wanna say on the essay really. So I hope that was helpful. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. And um, I think I've just got another couple of weeks on this series. So um, stay tuned and uh, thanks very much for thanks very much for joining.